So in ecology, there are levels of organization. That means that we try to take all the parts of ecology and organize them in a way that makes sense. And we start small and we get larger. In ecology, um, first we have to figure out what the word ecology means. Eco means home. Logi means study. So therefore, ecology means that it's the study of our home, which is Earth. So it's the study of the interactions between organisms and the environment they live in. The biosphere is where all life exists on Earth. So it spreads between eight kilometers above the Earth's surface and 11 kilometers below the surface of the ocean. We call that sea level. Okay, so ecolo ecological levels. Um, this is how we organize them. So we're going to start with the smallest or the most um, specific part of ecology, and that's the individual organism. And we put all those individual organisms into a population. And many different populations make up a community. Many communities um, plus their abiotic and biotic factors uh, make up an ecosystem. And then a biome is all of that combined in there, lots of different ecosystems. And then many biomes make up the whole biosphere, which again is the whole area that all living things are on Earth. So let's start with the individual organism. We're going to start with a zebra. And if you put a bunch of different zebras together, that would be a population. And now we have two different populations here. We've got zebras and we have wildebeests. And you could also say the grasses are also a population. That would be a community because that's all the living things that interact with one another. So now what if we put the biotic and the abiotic factors in there? Biotic means that those are the living things of an ecosystem. Bio means life. And tick, ick, the ending, means pertaining to life. Abiotic, A means without, so without living, okay, without life, meaning um, like rocks, you look at the examples here, rocks or mountains, any kind of water, um, any the weather, temperature, volcanoes can be considered abiotic. So abiotic biotic means anything that is non-living. Okay, so this picture, it's got living things like the zebra, elephant, but it also has non-living, like the dirt here. Um, the majority of it is non-living. The water is non-living. There might be living things in the water, but the water itself is not living. So that is called an ecosystem. Okay, so now look at this data table. You've got the abiotic on the left and the biotic on the right. And what I want you to do is place these items like sunlight. Where would you put that? Would you put it on the abiotic side or biotic? Dead squirrel. Okay, so sunlight, where would you put that? That would be abiotic. How about a dead squirrel? I myself would put that in the biotic side because it was alive at one time. 
your math teacher. That would be biotic. A car. Abiotic. An ant. Biotic. Maple tree. Biotic. Computer. Abiotic. Fire. Abiotic. Weather. That would also be abiotic. Okay, a habitat, it's like an organism's address. Okay, so turtles and cattails live in a pond. That's their habitat. It's like their address. This is a habitat. Is it real? I don't know, but it could be. How about this? What is this a habitat for? That's our digestive tract. And if you didn't already know that, bacteria live in there. Living things live inside of us. We'll talk more about that in um, the organ systems unit later in the year. Okay, a niche or niche. Some people call it both. I, I call it both. Um, just depends on what I feel like. So a niche is a species role in an ecosystem. So that means it's like the occupation or the job of that organism. So a flamingo, it feeds on the small mollusks and crustaceans at the bottom of the, the pond. That's its niche. The bees, they their niche is to go and find pollen or nectar and make it into honey. The beaver, its niche is to um, go find logs and make dams. 